so basically we sent you the list of modules and mm. uh, so these are the things we will cover this we are just doing the introduction today we will attempt the postfix rp10 overview most of this it is theoretical and then uh, installing cofax rp is something which we cannot do i will see if i can just uh, walk through the components or maybe if i have some older screenshots of when i have done the development uh, sorry installation so that part i will show you. okay and also i will share you the installation guide which you can go through parallelly and if you have any questions we can discuss those aspects but most of the time when we join the projects and all uh, installation is already done by the infra team and, or someone so we don't have to do much in the system but uh, yeah we'll cover it uh, from the uh, like uh, how we can just attempt it if there is something very special which we need to take care of and then prerequisite uh, knowledge review uh, like what all what all things you need so there is a there are a set of links i believe which you need to go through like uh, you need to be aware about how the regular expression works then little bit of xml little bit of json all those things so all of this like this area right it is more of a theory rather than actual uh, thing like uh, first four modules and then uh, module five will be uh, uh, about uh, like i think first is a simple what we have to do and patterns is mostly regular expression based things so or activities we will be doing loops uh, i'm not sure at this point uh, i think you will be introduced to excel sheet or something and uh, uh, like for for loop while loop like any other programming language how do you set mm -hmm. up a loop inside the cofax uh, rpa flow which you might have already done also okay yeah. but we'll just see the variations of all those things and input variable uh, and more more about the loops so there's one uh, like simple loop and then there is a repeat next thing so all of that they will <coughs> they will ask us to do now development database and management console so there is a apache derby database i think which is which comes with the tool okay. so that we will see if uh, if you want to deep dive into this maybe we can set up a management uh, like a sql server uh, developer edition and then we can also see how from the bot you can talk to the sql server so that that part also we will try to see then advanced yeah make, make a note of it and remind me when we are uh, on module line then advanced repeat next loop i think what should this is for this is while maybe and then repeat next so a lot of looping things like how to iterate through each of the item in uh, in database or in the excel sheet or maybe in the tags also so all of that is uh, uh, kind of covered under under the loop section then working with xls restful web services calling a web service so web service is a very important part in anything uh, in any applications these days all the applications if you go to the banks and all uh, they always expose their api and then some other application will call it so a little bit of understanding of web services we will cover and then how to call it from the from the bot that that all will cover then desktop automation this is where it gets a little bit tricky because desktop automation is something also called device automation and mm -hmm. uh, in some other other tools ui path i know so you go then there they will call it the screen recorder also right yeah, yeah so since since we have the application on the same system uh we might face a little bit of trouble but we'll see how we can best utilize then two or three modules will be on the desktop session uh, desktop automation somewhere here we will also try to discuss on the one second sorry desktop automation uh, okay it might be a little bit different from the device automation my bad desktop automation i think they uh, have a, another flow which is much more advanced and mm -hmm. that they are calling desktop automation we will get through that and then device automation is more on uh, how do you uh, connect to another system and then, then kind of take control of that system so that should be part of the yeah database connecting database or these types of yeah this one this one is device, desktop automation agent right so that uh, that uh, that uh, is this one uh sorry uh, i'm interrupting i think a desktop auto automation like what we do in desktop generally or what, which uh path uh, steps we are following same thing we can do with uh this thing uh, in desktop automation yes correctly uh -huh. So if you are going to a website or you are having a financial application yes. and there you are doing five clicks for a simple task to complete. So that task yes. can be done by the bot. That's what desktop automation does. Yes. Okay. Now there are different ways of it. Like uh, let's say you are going to a browser. Okay. And in the browser where you are loading some website. Okay. 
and then in the website we will do the login and then you will you will click a few things you will enter some data which is available to to you at that point of time okay so all of that you will be doing so so one way of it is loading it inside the bot so actual uh, url will be loaded and you will teach the bot how to click and where it to where to click okay yes. another thing is like pure uh, terminal uh, uh, thing like a terminal system or servers where you actually log into the server and then simply click on the image of the file like you have to click here and there you are not loading it into your browser so in desktop automation it is like that's why two or three sessions are there so it will be well detailed one one is like automation agent which goes to the system another uh, aspect of the desktop automation is uh, like a uh, website uh, website you will be loading it and as if you are doing it uh, bot will do it okay so so uh, see all that then there is something called caplet that is uh, more of a scheduling thing uh, where uh, at what time your bot should run or how as a business user how do you manually run it because uh, this uh, uh, designer and all there who are more of a developer right or administrator but ultimately yeah. these bots are being used by the system uh, sorry by the business folks right so they generally use a caplet feature so that also we'll see and then uh, if your company is sponsoring certification you can attempt the certification also but uh, okay. generally you have to buy it directly from cofax and if if any any of like uh, any of this uh, modules you have any doubts or something then we can discuss that okay yeah yeah sure okay so let's get started with this so before that let's let me check the system once i haven't touched it after i showed you last time so let me see if everything is running right now Okay, looks like this is active. Let's see the browser. This is active. You know the designer. Yes, we have the designer. Open. Okay. Now yeah, it should be good. Let's see, this is okay. It's already done. If you go to design mode, we have design mode. The debug mode, let's run it in the debug mode. So I'll also show you how to debug this on all this, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. So let's see if it is running click here first. It came here. So if you see input output state, yeah, state. So see this website is logged, logged, okay. And then there are variables. So right now we don't have any data on the variables. So one step at a time if we go. So see long text is something has been populated here. So extract the text that is done and extract the URL. So now URL is populated, which, is popul which URL it is on this website, right? So this is yeah. so all of this variable. So whatever it is supposed to do, it is doing. So these debugging and all, a little bit attempt on this so that uh, you are equipped uh, to uh, kind of debug your existing product. So one picture is taken. So somewhere on this page, there is a picture which is um, extracted by the bot. Not sure from there it got it. Show me somewhere here, not sure. I know, I don't know where from, somewhere they got it. Maybe it's loaded somewhere internally. But you get the idea of extracting it, right? Then if we go next, that should be it. So in TZ 2010, some, some value we are extracting from the bot, from the website. So that's how typically it will happen. So I'm, I was just checking the environment is working about. So we are good about the environment. Then another is desktop automation example, right? Let's take the desktop automation. A transformation to the I'm not sure if there is an example of desktop automation, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll build. build in robot, you will not get. I think even I searched. Okay, inbuilt robot you are searching. Yeah, inbuilt robot. Uh, I'm sorry. It's a brand oh, new no. environment which we which yeah. we uh, built for the training purpose, right? Okay. Okay. One more question. A website sometimes what happened? It doesn't work. Means uh, it doesn't load full page. So in that situation, what we should do? 
uh, I think different mo in the desktop automation when you are playing with it, right? There is a different modes also how it will be loaded. So once we get there, right, we will try to explore that if uh, one web's random website it, and no, also I'm then not using sometime uh, no desktop automation. I'm just using normal automation. Yeah, normal okay. website also, right? This these some of these websites will have very high level of security and all. They will detect yeah, that yeah. bot is working or environment. This is a bot environment, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So in yeah. that case, no, it will not be allowed to load. So you, you, when you are giving an estimate or something or working on a new requirement, you need to also check this as a feasibility whether this website is compatible, whether it is allowing me to click here and there. Okay. Hmm. Or no, no. Actually, it... I checked in other uh, UI means yeah, RPA tool like UI path. Even I checked in hmm. Blueprint. It was working. Okay, hmm. but it is not working in Cofax. So okay, if you have the URL, to... yeah, if you have the URL, no, we can try here. Okay. Huh, so, yeah, later we will try, not now. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, later we can try. So okay. So this is okay. So for the rough, okay, so now environment is working. Let's get back to the theory part. So what is the Cofax RPA? What is Cofax RPA bot? What is the concept called civil chair automation? What is synthetic API? So basically all your whatever bots you are building, right? That can be exposed as an API to the others. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. what the synthetic API, I believe it means. Then RPA project structure, how do you maintain a good structure in your project? Like you might have seen in your project already, there will be a robot folder, there will be a type folder, and then there will be a snippet folder, and then one more folder, database, or, or no, not database, some other folder will be there. So then one proper structure will be built. See this, snippets, types, to do, no, yeah, and robots, these three. And if something else is there, uh, like device automation, if you are uh, adding, so for that, uh, you might uh, create one more folder. So they generally ask you to maintain the structure. Okay, so that will be how RPA might fit with the others. So what's new? And so okay, so this one you can ignore. Already we are uh, we are because Cofax did not uh, expose that RPA 11 material to any of us. They might uh, they are giving in the classroom training when you go and travel to European country, but uh, mm -hmm. in India and all they never exposed that RPA 11 training. But the uh, thing is, here we will be doing the training on the 11 environment only. Okay. I think it's 11.2. Okay, that's the most recent one, which will have the yeah. best like, whatever features. I think maybe they might have uh, released one more thing, but this is like almost it should be okay for you for to attempt this one. Okay. Now there are few things which are new in this. So few things which are old old and we might not be covering everything but uh, let's uh, go through one of these so robo server robo server is basically uh, uh, for us it's more of a like uh, in the same machine we have everything so robo server is also same but when you are working in a distributed environment you might have a uh, different different robo server which will uh, kind of uh, balance the load of bots let's say you have 200 bots running so one server will not be enough for that so I think how do you see the robo server and I might not be very correct about this uh, somewhere here it will have the installation. Let's see. Uh, it should be a service or concept. We have to sign it in service. License server we have. Okay. Usually in the projects when you go right, they will have a service installed for robo server here okay i think okay. we are okay no i got it uh we are running it through this management console okay so that's why see robo robo successfully activated you see this so mm -hmm. if this i stop my uh, uh, this one will not work so you can also run it through a service okay. okay so you can have a service here so in the projects if you go there will be a robo server service also installed how do that um, get installed? Probably I will talk about it. I have that in some some projects uh, we have done earlier. Okay, so just make okay. a note of it. You can ask me something. 
So that is about the Robo server. Right now, it is running in the management that uh, uh, command prompt window. Then management console. Management console is a browser-based application, and for that you might have uh, you might need the uh, the support to be opened five double zero eight zero. Okay, then it is interacting with different server, and this is basically it gives you a bird's eye view of everything going on your platform, right? Yeah. So repository repository we have where you have everything, then database mapping, device mapping, and all that stuff. Then you also have the admin view where you can see your it's like a robo server how many robo servers are there so right now one is there okay and it is the same one same system id is there okay now you can also see your bots which are projects you have like there's a default project now not not bought here somewhere else bots will be there uh, i think repository will see robots yeah robots so here you can see all your bots if you have added it or loaded it to the management console then and then, 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 then also like this management the console is important so sometimes you should take the backup and all you want to export your project import your project so if you create a backup right so let's say mm -hmm. something bad happened in the system so you can restore it so this management console is a very uh, and also i think schedulers you will see it will be where is the schedulers but uh AWS settings design drivers so what time the bots and also run that should also be dictated from here uh, file resources dependent device mapping database event trigger can you see that device no database mapping somewhere scheduler will come here no, no. yes uh, schedule ma no message is here. Okay. So it is for the logging it is yeah. i think somewhere here no you will have the scheduler task view uh, all collection yeah this is the thing the task view is the thing where you will have the scheduler now this interface is totally changed like the project which i have been working on is a very new interface so we might have a little bit of struggle to find where things are but it will be worth like that effort will be worth because it will give us like the, like uh, very updated technology we'll be working on it so yeah, and also we have to struggle a little bit because the training material is on 10.4, but the actual bot mm -hmm. development will be doing on 11.2. So there is huge difference. Yeah. But uh, we'll see how, how how best we can adapt. Uh, oh, there it is, schedules. My yes. Schedules, and there you can add the schedule. You can select your bot and everything, project, and then bot. And all. So we'll get there. So management console is a very important application which you should be aware about. Kappa June. Kappa June is where your chaplets are announced or uh, scheduled and business will just use that as a shortcut or, or or they might, I think uh, sometimes they will also get a URL uh, using this Kappa June. So you can just launch, they can just launch the URL. It's a browser based application for them and they click it and port will start. Design Studio, you already know, I think. Yeah, yeah. Design. Development database is uh, Apache Derby database which comes uh, with the product uh, and it is only for the practice and tutorial if you are trying to use something on the actual project then 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 you should install either the uh, oracle or the sql server and then document transformation server this i think uh, so this is not covered as such in the course but i can give you a quick overview okay what it is and how does it it work no process and then the process discovery agent this is more for the business intelligence and this is also not covered in the course so process mm -hmm. discovery agent is uh, uh, basically uh, like uh, like uh, how many bots are running into the system how much time it took and what were like uh, uh, how many times it failed okay and then mm -hmm. all that support. so any, any reports about your bots in your environment that this mm -hmm. process discovery agent i think uh, uh, will will do and also it will suggest where all you can do the improvements so, i have one question here i uh, like uh -huh. uh, generally uh in ga before that i used to work in 9.6 okay uh cofax 9 uh, rpa 9.6 version okay mm -hmm. that time i was able to uh yeah, start means run the bot um, in multiple bots in one time but in 11 i think there is some setting issue or what uh, i cannot run one yeah, more than one bot means only one bot i can run in one time 
Now that depends on license. Okay, so maybe they, they might not have given you the full license. Parallel bots, if you want to run, the licenses should be there for the parallel thing. Two things are there. One is robo server capacity should be there, and another is license should be there. So if you see, uh, like uh, Design Studio. So if if I am using this license, and uh, if I if I uh, okay. So if I'm using this license, and uh, if I start more than two designs studio, right, then it will fail because it will say a sufficient license is not there. Then uh, production units, right, five uh, hmm. number of users. So I think more than five bots at a time will not be allowed. Something like that is there. These numbers have a sense, like uh, how okay. many bots you can run at a time. All is is dictated from here. Hmm. Okay. So maybe wherever you are having the issue, right. Go to the license and see how many licenses are allowed. Okay, and then okay, that will change. Yeah. And also, this licensing model and all has some it, some had some impact. So once we discuss license, right, we'll get into more details of this. Okay. 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 So what is our RPA? What does it do? So through COFEX uh, robotic process automation, COFEX RPA provides automated integration of structured and unstructured data. So all of these uh, data points can be uh, like uh, we can touch all the systems, extract whatever we need, and then uh, do some uh, transformation of the data and then integrate it with the other data. Okay, so that's what uh, like in high level a uh, lot of RPA system does, not only COFEX, right? Hmm. So what we do is we automate integration of structured and unstructured so you see all of this constitutes structured and unstructured data and almost any data source so you see how many data sources are there and it could it is never ending so from any data source we can have the unstructured data uh, including web interface spreadsheet and all and then we can try to transform and automate it it is also called like uh, uh, you might have heard about etl tools extract transform load right that's that's a yeah. similar sort of functionality. Okay. Okay. So COFAX RPA gives you the agile integration. So now this is this is what um, uh, like uh, people like uh, some people like us also we are doing some lot of manual work. Sometimes we are just going to some Excel sheet and doing few few steps and then closing it and then it is taken for the report. So all of those activities, right, can be automated by the bots because there is no human intelligence required. To do such tasks, right? And uh, yeah, yeah. and if you see this, uh, this is a person, and it is he is rotating his chair, and then going to some other system. You can think like we uh, doing one task, then we go to another task, we then go to third task, right? So we keep on shifting our yeah. attention from one application to another application in our day-to-day -day life, especially the lower level teams, L3, uh, L3, L4 teams, right? Who have a lot of yeah. these manual tasks or data entry operator as such. Right, so yeah, that's where the bot comes. Cofer, so for the definition, Cofex RPA bots are the software robots that can automate data integration tasks. Sometimes this is uh, known as civil chair automation, eliminating manual data entry or copying and pasting. Okay. Yeah. Now, Cofex RPA bots can also automate desktop application and related tasks greatly. Improved. So it is a picture like bots are doing the job rather than a person. Yeah. So in the RPA project, you will have these things like uh, uh, I said, uh, snippets, types, and bots I showed you, right? So then mm -hmm. the structure will be like uh, if you are using a database, then you will have a database folder also. And if you are connecting to some other system, like you are mapped to some other devices, so you will have a device mapping uh, folder also. Okay. So okay. what type folder contains? What robots folder contains? A snippet. A snippet is like a, a small program. Uh, and again, it, it constitutes of the bot activity only. But if you think like that, some something can be some uh, a snippet is something which you can reuse. Okay. Yeah. Like let's say pan card validation. So that is something which you can use in your multiple application in a in an Indian bank scenario. So you will just whatever validation is required for the pan, you will uh, put it in a snippet, and then that snippet can be called from multiple bots. So you don't have to write it all together again everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And devices are mapped remote uh, computers running uh, uh, 
uh, a specific uh, desktop application and tasks. So devices, we will get into the more detail once we get to the uh, desktop automation, automation piece. Yeah. So RPA bot flexible enough to meet the needs of the use case. So these are the uses some of them like uh, use like a service, uh, user to automate uh, user task in an attended fashion, use for data collection, bad job, caplets. Okay. So you can also use the, uh, uh, like I was telling you about the API, right? So mm -hmm. a bot can be exposed as an API. So whatever it needs, you can put it there and then call the bot and, uh, and it will do its work and come back. So you just, and then also it can be like attended fashion. Let's say you are doing a lot of jobs, okay? A lot, lot of activities you are doing. And one part of that activity is very manual. So what you can do for that, you can create a bot and then uh, you can you can just click it. So it is like attended fashion. This somebody is doing along with that bot can also assist. Okay. For data collection, okay. like this is what you have been doing mostly. You go to a website, collect the data and keep it. And that's what you will practice also. Caplet provides an individual user interaction. So again, uh, like Caplet, uh, you have a shortcut and then we just double click and run it. For the developers, I think uh, for in Design Studio, we can run through the system in the debug mode and check what our bot is doing. Okay. And in Management Console, uh, uh, manually schedule, we can schedule the bot, we can manually run the bot also, and we can deploy Caplets as a as a service using API or REST. So we can call that uh, uh, bot running via different ways. Okay. Deployment, repository library in the management also, disk library in the form of set. So basically deployment is uh, not much complex here. You simply load the project somewhere. Uh, I think uh, you will have the uh, upload option on the design tab. So you see this upload. So you can up upload your project. Another way is you can have, you can just uh, uh, open the folder and copy those uh, zip files or XML files, and that is kind of your source code of a uh, bot, bot. So deployment is very uh, uh, simple in, in this tool. So repository library, what they mean by repository library. So if you go to this, uh, uh, where it is, sorry. Okay, so this, this folder basically uh, keeps everything about your bot right here, okay? So this is your source code. And you can simply take it to from one environment to another environment and use it. Yeah, just copy and paste. Yes. And another way is for deploying, you just uh, browse it and then upload it to the management console. So in order to schedule it, create a caplet and all, you have to make it available to the management console. Okay. Okay. This part is clear. So where no API exists for an application or uh, when existing APIs don't provide the full scope of functions needed, Cofax RPO offers an agile, practical and non entrance way. So what they are basically trying to say here is, let's say there is another application where API is not there. Okay. Yeah. So what you can do, uh, whatever functionality you want from that API, you can create a bot which will go and click here and there and whatever it is supposed to do and then you can expose the cofax rp as a bot right so uh, as an API. so that's what synthetic api means so where there is no api exists okay. for like mainframe application maybe there is no api how uh, there is no way they can expose it as an api for a certain functionality so what are you going to do you tell them okay how would you do it in your system then you make a bot which will do it in their system and after the bot is made then you can expose the bot as an API. Okay. So that's what synthetic API is. They don't find much audience, but I haven't seen people like big, making a bot and exposing it as API, but uh, certainly that is a possibility. Now these are some of the RPA solutions like market intelligence, ecosystem automation, so social media and brand monitoring, financial research, uh, open source intelligence, fraud detection, competitive pricing, so these are all different different project use cases they have just listed and then desktop automation it could be like uh, uh, windows applications you want to attempt document transformation is also part of the uh, desktop automation where you want to get the data from the images 
and then java mm -hmm. applications you can call from on this desktop automation and automated terminal emulation so something which is not working there uh, like you had a question right like uh, yeah. when i try to do some website it is not working if it is not working there then this place where you have to come because this is more advanced version of the older uh, design studio okay so yeah, desktop yeah. automation you have more supported feature it has it supports chromium browser i believe I think it's called yes chromium, chromium. yes yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that has very advanced feature, and that those websites should work there, which is not working there. And then even at that level also, right? Uh, it has some backend configurations like how does your website loads. So we'll get there once. Uh, uh, then we will speak about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I completely forgot about that Chromium browser thing. It's okay. No. Uh, okay. So this part is not important, but I think you had an inclination towards uh kta right so yeah and also cofax cofax as a larger company then uh, mm -hmm. you should let it understand so rpa is one of the offering but uh, i think the biggest offering what cofax has in till today is cognitive capture okay so co cognitive capture is something uh, which uh, uh, which uh, has the most of their customers Okay. Like invoice or these types of uh, PDF, we have yes, to capture. Yes, yes, yes. So let's say before 2015 and all, Cofax didn't have much. Even even RPA, this was a cop out tool which was acquired by Cofax later on. Okay. Yes. So before, like before, Cofax was a bigger company. What they had was, or mostly they had capture thing, Cofax capture yeah. or Cofax transformation model they call it, and and then nine. Today also 95% of their customer uses Cofax, as per my knowledge, but it could be wrong, those numbers, uh, uses Cofax for cognitive capture capabilities only. Even KTA also has that capability. Older days, it was KC and KTM. Now, on KTA platform, they have these capabilities and a lot of projects are going uh, in the market where people are trying to migrate their applications to KTA, where they are trying to leverage this uh, uh, cognitive capture. and. On the KTA platform, it also has the orchestration, similar to our your flow and all, right? Uh, in, yeah. in, in bots. So they have a more advanced uh, uh, workflow concept, okay? And that is well integrated with cognitive capture. So these two combined, uh, you can say, is uh, KTA. Okay, this one and this one. And then RPA uh, on and off, uh, like uh, KTA can call RPA bot, RPA bot can call KTA applications. So they have okay. done that integration, but in, uh, practically, these are uh, RPA is a different application and KTA is a different application, but they have intercompatibility where you can configure the bots in the in the um, KTA and simply call it from an activity that I will show you when we do the KTA. And in inside this training, probably I will show you how to at least I will show you the place from where KTA bot KTA applications can be called. Now, yeah, I mean, this is where uh, 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 one thing I want to add is like. Uh, yeah, you are tra training, you are giving training. So, like, just think about RP as well as KTA both. Okay, because uh, lots of things I understand, like, I, as for my knowledge, you can cover here also. Okay, and in KTA, KTA thing. So, means both I have to do, that is fixed. Okay, mm -hmm. so just uh, I need confirmation. KTA I am doing by myself. Okay, and RP I am doing by, uh, obviously, I told you, office. Okay, so you should design like uh yeah, like that only means like uh, you are training me train me in kta as well as rpa both okay so okay let me let me think because the let's see the course is very focused on the rpa so wherever the scope mm -hmm. of uh, having like i just said wherever i find a scope to explain some of the kta concepts i will, I will yeah. just explain it Okay. Because the yeah, yeah, PDFs right. and yeah pdfs and everything for rpa the kta is uh, totally different Okay, yeah, whatever. It is. And then uh, you don't have to worry about all the other things like uh, communication and e signature. Generally, um, those are very niche domain where very particular people will work, and you don't find much of demand there. So for now, a starting point, you can focus on the cognitive capture, RPA, and the orchestration part of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So, what's new in RPA? 
uh, I, I think uh, you have a, a reference point and this is 10.4 and we are working on the 11.2, right? So there won't yes. be any much things which we have to do. I think most of the things we will read as a, uh, like I think, oh, okay, what is important in this version, right? At this, mm -hmm. On this version, they introduced the desktop automation, more features on desktop automation. Also, I think very much on this version only, they introduced the document uh, transformation which we will i think extensively we will see in kta same thing okay so do document transformation is very okay. much uh, discussed in the kta but uh, here uh, only integration points we will try to discuss and uh, when we do kta thing there we will uh, uh, discuss like how the locators are there how do you go to image and get the particular data from part of the images invoices or check documents or loan application yeah. right those things yeah. now uh okay so let's go through each point attended automation attended automation uh, uh, in the sense uh, that uh, in presence of a human uh, they will have the uh, attended automation let's read about this forward about this. the attended automations uh, means uh, in presence of human how you can have the automation added okay so it's like part of a bigger process uh, like let, let's say you are doing 100 uh, clicks okay and in that 100 clicks some requires your knowledge as a human but maybe 60 clicks are there where it is very much a straightforward process where you every time you go and click on the same things right so there you can okay, uh, yes. avail this attended automation thing okay? where uh, part of the process is done by the bot but overall human is needed so uh, this bot kind of assist by humans okay unattended means independently bot can work and you got this part so uh, I think uh, we are anyways going to uh, discuss all of this in docs uh, automation thing. So let's hmm. just skip this part. I, I don't think uh, we uh, need to discuss all of this in individually. Anyways, we are going to build these build these features, oh. right? Yeah, sure, sure. So RPA components, we already discussed about it on the first slide itself. So I'll simply skip this one, Kappa zone, every, all of these. The process discovery, let's say, because this is almost we will not touch, but from the definition perspective, you should be knowing. Okay. So process discovery allows the generation of COFAX RPA stats uh, data viewed in series of web browser dashboards. So what what is happening here? COFAX as a company, right? It has a product called COFAX Insight. Which they acquired from some other company mm -hmm. and what they did whatever product cofax has they have integrated this inside product with all this product all their offerings so okay. uh, here here i think process discovery is the uh, ui where you will get all these reports and other things about them in kta they called it kiafta cofax insight for total agility so there also this reporting kind of thing is there where you can see the statistical data okay and then this one is all about the image question. I think first session you asked for the images, how the data gets uh, extracted. So all of hmm. that, I think, uh, since you are pursuing the KTA also, so there it will be discussed in very much detail, like how do you create something which will, let's say your PAN card is there. So in your PAN hmm. card, how your name will be extracted, how your uh, uh, this thing will be extracted, uh, your PAN card number or date of birth. Uh, maybe we can do that a use case also when we are building building that. Uh, no, no, actually in RPA we can extract also, no? Yes, RPA also we can extract because uh, on this system we do have that. Let's check. Mm -hmm. So here something called project builder is there and there we can see it. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we already have it installed somewhere. Let's see if it is working. If it is working then no problem. You can, uh, you, you can just send us this uh, your pan card and then we can build that project. Yeah, yeah. see that. I hope it is working and the license is there. So new project, pad extraction. So this one we'll see. And C drive. Okay. And if it works, then we shall have it. I think it is working. Yeah, so this is a project. So here we can create, bring our pan card and do the development and then we will see okay so that we can do under this line no problem your pan card okay. extraction will show you something just make a note of it when we are discussing this part we will we'll do it okay okay sorry now 
but in this part is clear to us now this is how we are running right now uh like uh, uh we are running it is like a console application but as i said to you uh, you can also uh, uh, create a service on the windows and you know, you can run it there also and uh, database also we can run it like this development database so in the start menu we have something called the start uh, development database so if you go ahead go to the rpa folder so here you can see somewhere it should be said start the start development database so once you do that when the screen will open and it will temporarily start your database so these are all small console applications which needs to be running behind the scene in order to cofax to work only in the design environment sorry training environment when you do it actual project then you will have a service for everything okay yeah yeah and this is how the caplets look like i don't know whether we have the caplets installed it should be there so let's see the caplet also uh yeah design studio do you see caplet go any from the management console you also will click on i don't remember from where do we add it the older version i do the interface okay i will get that uh, some some url is there which needs to be uh, uh, taken so i will see uh, where it is in the help files and i will get back on that one but caplet will look something like this they might have made, made some advance also or uh, some advanced feature also this is the old screenshot i believe yeah yeah this is the oldest one i think yeah and this part is your player because you are doing already this is a document transformation so for your pan card you will do a small project where we will create these three fields pan card your name and date of birth and we will see how it is structured okay no so this um, for a doc transformation part then there is also thin client validation this we won't be covering in this training but uh, let's say uh, you want to uh, like uh, let, let's take your pan card example let's say pan card number was not extracted correctly then mm -hmm. there should be some human in the loop right so for yes. that uh, this uh, for that uh, 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 browser in the browser you can use a interface it's like a form where you can see your pan card in this section and you can see your fields in this section and you can correct it so i'm not sure if you will be able to establish this uh, we, sh we should be able to test most of the things here itself in this interface but uh, once it comes we'll see okay this interface itself we should be able to see things like i think there is a validate button this might get enabled uh, once we start uh, uh, doing the project actual development okay okay so and there is a license which you don't have to use but this is like as part of the installation we have it installed but uh, yes license should be activated if the proper license is not, not there nothing will work and, oh, we have we check this, license in uh, yeah, so management console no no not that license this is a separate license so here in the document transformation so when you install the document transformation right so there is a corfax license utility once you click on this once you click on this you will get us a, a similar ui this ui okay where it will okay. show where till what date your license is activated and all but uh, for this training we might not require uh, uh, like a uh, uh in a sense we, we will do a small project but uh, uh in any environment right wherever project you are going uh, hmm. there already the licenses will be there up there and then you just have to use it and then you have this process di discovery i was telling you about the reports right where you can see like which bot ran or like how how much uh how many sessions it took uh total duration of the bot running uh like number of applications running and all that like whatever makes sense in terms of bot running everything will be there on this application and then demo so i think we have been doing demo in and out like we are going the applications and all so first thing i showed you is a little bit of small demo only right so now what is the next one installation okay so we'll stop here today and uh, is mostly we will uh, connect at the same time today is the first session so a little bit uh, um, i'm just taking time to explain you mm -hmm. and no, once no, we start building 
so uh, once we start building then the actual fun will begin so, so when we do means like uh, when we will start class not class uh, class we started uh, next class tell me tomorrow same thing bye bye okay thank you bye bye we'll move to we'll move to tomorrow again thank you bye yeah sure tomorrow